On May 27, 2020, private company SpaceX is all set to launch its first crewed mission to the International Space Station. The reason why this is such a historic space flight is that American astronauts will be launched using American rockets from American soil for the first time since the era of the shuttle, which was back in 2011. At 4.33 p.m. Eastern Time, astronauts Bob Bacon and Doug Hurdle on board the Crew Dragon capsule will lift off of Cape Canaveral with the aid of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket and begin their journey to the ISS. They will be staying aboard the ISS for anywhere between 30 days to 118 days, depending upon the re-entry conditions. All of this was possible because of NASA's commercial crew expedition, which gave private companies like SpaceX and Boeing contracts so as to send the next American to space from American soil, right up to May 27th. So on May 13th, both the astronauts Bob and Doug went into a self-quarantine at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. You may be surprised to know that this wasn't because of the coronavirus pandemic. It is actually pretty standard for astronauts to go into self-quarantine before their missions, since when they're working their missions, they are 125,000 miles away from the nearest pharmacy. On May 20th, 2020, the astronauts were shifted to the Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida, where they completed the rest of their quarantine. On May 21st, NASA will give the Demo 2 mission a flight readiness review. It is only after passing this review that SpaceX can begin with its final launch preparations. On May 22nd, SpaceX conducted a static fire test, where they fired the Merlin engines present in the rocket booster for a couple of seconds so as to ensure that they are in working order. On May 23rd, along with both of the astronauts, an entire dress rehearsal of the launch was conducted. Check out these pictures. On May 25th, which is the day I'm recording this video, NASA gets to give one more flight readiness review. Only the review is passed and in the presence of optimum weather conditions does SpaceX have a chance to make history with its demo to mission on May 27th. However, in case of weather difficulties, May 30th has been chosen as the backup launch date. Now it's time for our interview with Laura. Let's go. So, uh, hi guys. Uh, we're interviewing Laura today. Laura is a NASA subject matter expert for planetary science missions. She's the owner of a space consulting firm called Astrolytical, which is awesome, by the way. Uh, she, they specialize in space science, industry, and policy. She serves on the advisory board for the Lifeboat Foundation and the Society of Women in Space Exploration. She's also a mentor for the Brooke Owens Fellowship Program. And my personal favorite, she's the author of The Rise of the Space Age Millennials, which uh, is a book that talks all about the millennial generation taking on the space sector. So thank you so much for sparing a few minutes to talk with us, Laura. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm glad to talk to you. Okay, so first of all, how are you doing? How are things like work from home? How is it going? Going pretty well. I've got two young kids, so that makes it all a little bit more challenging. Yeah. But I think we've adjusted pretty well and I'm a little disappointed I won't be down in Florida in person but oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to the upcoming launch and watching it on um, on the internet <laughs> yes so let's just jump right in so the demo to mission or as it is like being called on Wednesday American astronauts American rocket from American soil since the shuttle so could you just tell us you have to clarify that that's actually um, if you count the Virgin Galactic flights, they launched in 2018 and 2019. Yeah. And they actually launched American rockets yeah. and American astronauts on the soil. It just wasn't to orbit. It wasn't yeah, to be an astronaut. Yes, to orbit, yes. This is a great achievement. Yeah. It, it, I'm, I'm really hoping that SpaceX is able to do this because I'll be wrong if I say it's a great achievement. It's not good, yeah. but I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> yes. So could you just tell us why this is like such an important day for space flight? Like Wednesday, why is it so important? That is such a great question. It's, we've been looking forward to this for years. Uh, so back when 2011 happened, 2011 is when the space shuttle program retired and NASA had no way to get astronauts to the International Space Station for the first time in a long time. So the space shuttles have taken pauses and there were little pauses between programs previously, but nine years is a long gap and yeah. no one expected it to be a nine year gap. They thought that, um, SpaceX and Boeing, those two companies that were picked as commercial crew program partners, they thought that they'd get back by 2017, which is still a long gap. Yeah. Um, but it's taken a lot longer than, than anticipated to get these programs ready, and Boeing still isn't ready with their Starliner yeah. uh, capsule. 
So really, it's just SpaceX that we're looking forward to for this year, returning NASA's ability to launch its own astronauts, which is something that NASA hasn't been able to do. They've been buying seats from Russians to yeah. ride on the Russian soil. So it's really a great thing for NASA to be able to do this using commercial partners, which is another mindset shift. Because previously, government agencies have only trusted astronauts to be flown on government rockets. And now we're seeing a shift where NASA is willing to partner with the commercial sector to launch on a commercial rocket. All commercial rockets and partnerships, um, it, it's been a, it's been there from the beginning, you know, NASA rockets are still built by commercial partners, but it's a mindset shift where it's not a NASA vehicle. It's a SpaceX vehicle. Yeah. And we're just going to have to see how that mind shed, mind, mind uh, switch is able to affect the rest of the industry when it comes to launching people to the moon, for example. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as you mentioned, the mind shift uh, towards the private sector and the private companies are coming in and partnering with these government agencies. What can you say about the future of like the private space sector? Well, right now we've seen this new birth over the past decade, 15 years or so of this new type of commercial sector where um, it's a lot of private individuals who are able, who have, have, are wealthy and able to fund their own rocket programs to launch um, their own rockets, whether that's rockets with just payloads or rockets with people. And we haven't really seen that come into fruition with the people yet. You know, for yeah. example, SpaceX has been launching a lot with their um, their Falcon Pretty 9 supply, yeah. and now Falcon Heavy um, launching payloads, but they have yet to actually launch people. So this will be the first time that SpaceX launches at people. And we're seeing this with companies like Virgin Galactic and um, Blue Origin. They too want to launch people um, outside of NASA, you know, in partnership with NASA, but also doing their own thing as well. And so it's, it's a real shift in the way that these companies are able to operate and hopefully in the future be able to partner even more with commercial or with government agencies, whether that's NASA or whether that's with other governments because we're also seeing a bit more of willingness to have other government agencies, um, you know, fly on the International Space Station. Maybe a country that doesn't have the ability to fly their own astronauts yeah. can partner with SpaceX or Boeing or uh, another company like Axiom to fly to the International Space Station, which has been done in the past, but through Russia, through Roscosmos, through a government agency, yeah. a partnership with a company called Space Adventures. Hmm. Um, but we have not yet seen that with private companies doing all the work. So it's a really exciting time. Yeah. So uh, I just wanted to mention this. So I'm from India. And uh, just last week, the Indian government also actually announced that the private sector, like the private space sector in India, it will get access to uh, the Indian space organization facilities and, uh, you know, kind of a partnership between the government agencies and the private agencies, even in India, so as to, you know, push the space exploration forward even further. So like change is happening everywhere. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. And I think that's only going to have increased growth in the space sector in India, because what we're going to see is more and more entrepreneurs in India um, start their own companies and start um, space companies and hiring local talent in India that maybe previously didn't have the opportunity to work for Israel. So I think it's really fantastic that um, the Indian government is now finally um, being more willing to partner with um, the private that sector. Yes. And I think that we're going to see that even more in other countries as well. Okay, so another kind of related to the demo to mission. How much do you think uh, the COVID-19 pandemic actually, you know, the kind of effect it had on the whole timeline of the demo to mission? Well, thankfully, we haven't actually seen it affect too much of the demo to mission for SpaceX. SpaceX has delayed a couple of other launches. Um, there's Starlink, uh, there was a GPS launch, yeah. um, and those things were delayed. And we've seen slowdowns in other places, like NASA centers, they had to go on stage three and stage four operations. That means a lot of people were working and still are working, teleworking remotely, um, and a lot of facilities were shut down and a lot of tests postponed. Yeah. But what we've seen with the SpaceX mission is that they've really pushed forward. And one thing that the NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine said is that this is a way to really um, excite the public. 
and really get people motivated in a, a somewhat of a dark time. And we really want to have that um, be, you know, space being the beacon. And yeah. that was sort of true in the 60s too, where the 1960s were a really tough time in America. Um, a lot of uh, division and war and, and all these, uh, you know, civil strife. And, and there, there was the shining beacon that was Apollo. Not to say that Apollo was universally popular, because it wasn't, but once astronauts landed on the moon, that was seen globally as a fantastic achievement for all of humankind. Yeah. So in that same way, I think that NASA is seeing this achievement as some spectacular thing to celebrate, which it is. And that way we can have something to celebrate rather than just, just the doom and gloom of right now, yeah. um, instead focusing on the positives that are going on. And, and I'm really thankful that I mean, you know, I predicted that it would slip into June or, or later, and I'm really glad that I'm being proven wrong. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that they are moving forward with it safely. Okay. So uh, finally, towards the end of the interview, uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, how does the demo mission and, you know, SpaceX uh, or even America getting back the capabilities to launch uh, astronauts into orbit how is it affecting their 2024 goal to the moon with the artemis program and even to mars like what is the significance of this event towards the future well, I wouldn't say that this event directly affects things for the Artemis program getting to the moon, um, but it has indirect benefits. For example, if more of the commercial sector can do more on the International Space Station, then NASA doesn't have to necessarily put so much funding into the International Space Station. The idea is to commercialize ISS, and um, this has been the goal for, for a little while now and hasn't really taken off yet, but um, the more that companies or individuals can get transported uh, affordably and um, safely to the ISS, the more that can be done. And the more that can be done, either um, automatic or with um, astronauts on the ISS, the more research can be done, R&D for companies, um, even entertainment. Um, like we saw recently with a Tom Cruise announcement. Yeah. Um, so you just never know what kind of things can happen on the ISS that can make money for the commercial sector that NASA can then use that freed up money to funnel elsewhere. Um, so the idea is that ISS is very expensive and NASA can't infinitely pay for it forever. Yeah. Um, so maybe having commercial partners now being more able to access space through SpaceX and Boeing and other companies and Axiom and maybe Bigelow if they come back um, to, to free up money for Artemis. And remember I said there was also a shift in mindset of commercial companies launching NASA astronauts. Well, we're also seeing that with the, uh, uh, the Artemis program. So three commercial companies have been chosen to move forward for the next 10 months to do studies to see if they yeah. can land human uh, lander systems Landers. on the surface of the moon. Yeah. SpaceX was one of them, and we're just going to see how that plays out. So if the government can be convinced, and by government I mean both NASA and Congress, because Congress is the one that gives the funding here in the United States, if they can be convinced that private companies can safely launch astronauts to the ISS, well maybe they can be convinced that private companies can safely partner with NASA to land humans on the moon. No, that's going to be really nice. So uh, that's I'm it from my side. I, yeah, I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, uh, do you have any closing remarks? Because that's it from my side. Just the demo too. Will you be watching with your entire family? Like, like you, like everyone else. I'm really excited for it. And it's been a long time coming. And like I said, I wish I was there in person, but we're also going to have to go online and cheer them on. And yeah. um, I'm really looking forward to seeing the succeed. And it's only the first flight, but it's called Demo 2 for a reason, because it's yeah. still a demonstration mission. Then it's the beginning of a whole new era. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to seeing how it plays out. OK, thank you so much for talking to me. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. So that's the demo mission for you. This mission is extremely significant, of course, because America has brought back the capabilities of launching a human being into space again. But it also shows us the importance of the partnership between government agencies and private companies and how beneficial they can be. In fact, the private companies are helping just as much in growth and development of the space sector. And this is also an image of local times at which the launches are actually going to happen. So grab a seat, have fun, enjoy. It's definitely going to be a historic day and I'm super excited for it. Thank you.